All right, welcome back to the next part in building the Rick and Morty Swift iOS app. In the last part, we talked about compositional layout and we actually put together the layout for the character detail screen. In this video, we're gonna continue and talk about some of the data structures that we're gonna use and how we're gonna organize all that good stuff. Uh, before we jump into things, as per usual, drop a like. It really helps out video reach as well as YouTube being happy with the video. Drop a comment, subscribe if you're new here and not subscribed yet, and let's continue. So I'm just gonna stop the application, build and run so I can remember myself exactly where we left off. All right, so this is basically the screen we're gonna continue. And if memory serves, we had created an enum which represents the three sections here. Now, respectively, we're gonna want three different kinds of cells to fulfill these three different sections, right? We're gonna need a uh, image cell up here, maybe a character info cell, and then we're also gonna need a character episode cell. With each of those cells, we're gonna want a view model and herein lies our data situation. So let's actually create some of the objects that I'm rambling about. And I think that'll actually help illustrate some of this stuff. So under views, I am gonna create a new folder called character details. And this will just help us keep things a smidge more organized. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and also call this one here I'll call this one here character, both of these, since they are character specific. So I will go ahead and call that character. So cool. So under the character details, let's create three new classes. They're going to all be UI collection view cells. And the first one will be RM character photo collection view cell. All right, looking pretty good. We're gonna create one more. We're gonna do this one as the RM character info collection view cell. And then the third one is going to be a RM character uh, episode collection view cell. So cool, so we have now got three of these here. They are all cells. Respectively, we're gonna to want to register them with our collection view, but more importantly, we're gonna want view models for them. So let's open up our view model folder and similar to the views folder, let's create a character detail subfolder so we can keep things organized. Otherwise, this is gonna get ridiculously out of hand very quickly and let's start creating some of these view models. So what I like to do is just create three files and we can just paste the name of the view and just suffix it yourself uh, with the word view model. It's frankly the easiest and quickest way to uh, do this without having to type a whole bunch of stuff out. So we'll go ahead and do view model like so. And then finally, we'll do the third one here. Bear with me, so I'll paste this and we will do view model. So in each of these, we're gonna actually want to create a data structure, AKA a struct or a class that matches uh, what we have actually specified here. So we're gonna say this one is the collection view cell view model for the character info. We'll toss an initializer in there. We'll do this next one here. And I think I skipped the first one accidentally. Let's go ahead and spell that correctly. Let's go back to this first one. And for some reason, it won't let me actually click and copy it. Luckily, I have the name up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'll go and do that. And we'll toss in this initializer. Awesome. So we now have a view model object that we're gonna be leveraging. Whoops, let's find our simulator for each of these cells. And we've also created these cells here. So how are we gonna actually store in our detail view, view model here these uh, specific cell view models, right? We wanna do it in a bit more intelligent of a way. So the way we're gonna actually do this is we're gonna use something called associated values with these enum cases, right? So each of these is going to have an associated value of one or more view models. Now for the photo section, this one's pretty simple, right? We're only gonna have one of these cells. So what we already know is we already have a single view model here. So we can actually hard code it accordingly. We can say this is a RM character photo cell uh, collection view cell view model. It's a bit of a mouthful of that name, but anyways, it is fairly descriptive. So we're gonna have the N number of view models for the information. So respectively, this one is gonna be view models, plural. This will be a character info cell view model array. And finally, similarly for episodes, this one is going to be for episodes. I'm just gonna copy and paste. 
and just change it there. Now, because we're using these associated types, one thing becomes interesting. And that thing is the fact that we can't really do case iterable now because we need to actually create these sub associated values and create this collection of sections manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is going to be an array of the section type and it's gonna start off as empty. And in our initializer, we are going to go ahead and actually set this up. So we're gonna say set up uh, sections and we're going to create this right below. So right here, we're going to create a function and it'll be set up sections. And we're going to say sections is as follows. So we're going to say, first and foremost, we have the photo in here. Let's instantiate the respective view model. Next, we're going to have the information with a collection of these view models. So I'm just going to create a few of these just to illustrate my point. Maybe we'll do four. And then finally, we're going to also have the uh, what's the last one? The episode one, which is going to once again, I guess episodes plural, have maybe we'll do four of these. And now that we have this stuff, down where our data source is implemented, which is actually in this case, it happens to be in the controller, we don't want to be hard coding values in here, right? So we currently have hard coded number of sections is correct, but we've hard coded how many items we put in each section. So instead, what we want to actually do is we want to get the current section type, which is going to be the view model sections at the section index. Now keep in mind the naming is a little confusing here. Section is an integer that is in fact coming into this uh, function. And then we can switch on this guy instead of switching on you know a random integer. So let's do switch on section type. And we have these, right? So in the photo case, we can actually delete this and we know we only have one cell. And in this case, we're gonna return view models count and same thing here. So let's make sure that this goes away. Let's try to build and it looks like we are successfully building here. And accordingly, right now we wanna dequeue the appropriate cell. We're just doing you know, the standard one that we have registered, but let's actually go and see if our view actually is according to what we passed in. So we passed in one view model for this photo cell, looks good, four for this info section, and four for this episode section. So cool, it looks like the view models that we are actually creating and uh, hanging on to is how our collection view is behaving, which is exactly what we want. Our data will drive our view. So let's actually register these cells that we've created. So before I do that, what I'm gonna wanna do is add that cell identifier on each of these and I'm gonna finalize each of these classes. Just good practice and it also uh, informs us that these cells are not meant to be uh, subclass. So we'll go ahead and create a cell identifier in each of these. And by the way, you can use anything for the cell identifier. I just happen to prefer to use the name of the class for which it is an identifier. It's just helpful for um, debugging in case it crashes and that way I don't actually have to use mental energy to figure out you know what the heck it should be. So let's go back to our character detail view and where we ever, wherever we create the collection view, we're gonna want to register those cells. So let's do that, it's right here. We're gonna say rm character photo collection view cell and the identifier will be that dot cell identifier and we can copy and paste this a total of three times and let's see if i can change this without having a million typos this one here will be info info and this last one here will be episode singular and we'll do this here as well but if we build and run right now our app is actually going to crash and the reason it's going to crash is because we're dequeuing a cell in our collection, uh, rather our controller here with an identifier of cell. And that's not what we wanna do. We wanna dynamically dequeue a type of cell based on the type of data we have. So that being said, we wanna actually get the current section for which we're trying to dequeue. And we've actually done this up above already. We can actually copy and paste it. So I'm gonna copy and paste this entire switch. And let me line break for some readability. And keep in mind, this has a single view model. I just got rid of it up here since we can hard code return one. But now we know in each of these which type of cell that we need to dequeue. 
And what we can actually do, in fact, is um, I'm actually going to keep this, uh, this if else here so we still have colors, but for each of these, we can go ahead and um, actually DQ an appropriate cell as well as cast it. So this one is going to be a RM character photo collection view cell. And just go ahead and ignore the um, ignore all the warnings for a quick second. And we are going to return this cell here. Now we are eventually going to also, so let's see what the problem is, collection view cell, and this should be dot identifier. Uh, eventually we are going to want to configure the cell with you know one of the view models here but for now let's just create these get this out of the way all right now we're going to want to update these so this one here is for info let's update that let's update that and be very careful when you copy and paste this stuff because it's really easy to mess it up so let's make sure i did that correct and it looks like i already messed it up so let's see what the heck i did wrong there is no section here. We need to get that off of the index path. And it's still yelling at me. Let's see what I did wrong here. And it is basically yelling about the fact that we don't have any cell there. We need to set those colors inside of here. So let's play, play with the colors a little bit. So the episode will be orange. The info will be, let's do red. And then for the uh, photo, we're gonna go ahead and maybe we'll make this a system yellow. And let's see, we still got some still got some errors and it's actually yelling at me here. We don't need that return cell because we don't have a cell down there. So we'll click this and once again, we should see the exact same thing, obviously different colors, but now these cells are the appropriate subclasses that we've created. We just now need to actually build out those cells and populate the content for those cells and actually uh, you know, show the appropriate information in there. So let me just do one other thing for each of these cells and then we'll wrap up this video. So we know that we are going to want to configure each of these cells with the respective view model. So I am going to create a function in each of these called configure with view model it'll basically be the name of the class with view model suffixed onto it and i'm also gonna for the sake of just making our lives easier just do some base setup here that i'll copy and paste as well to all of the other classes since we're going to want it and um it's no point in just typing it over and over so we're gonna want a function in here to uh, set up constraints we're also gonna to want to override prepare for reuse. So prepare for reuse. And I guess that's good enough for now. So let's go ahead and copy all this stuff. So we'll take this, paste it on in here. And make sure you just line break things appropriately for readability. And don't forget to change the type of the view model here. So that'll be view model. And then this one in here will be for this class. And we're going to do this one, dot view model. Now back in our controller, we can actually now call that function and say cell configure view model. For the photo, remember we only have one view model. For this one here, for info, we can say configure and we have a collection of view models. So we're gonna say the nth element, but this will be index path.row and same exact thing for the episode. So go ahead and build and run. You should see absolutely no change, but there shouldn't be any crashing either, which is what we care about. So we're in pretty good shape. It looks like we've got our data binding set up. We're gonna wanna actually create these uh, sections appropriately. At the moment, if we jump into the view model for this character uh, detail view, we kind of just created some dummy stuff in here, but we have the backing model here, which is a character, and we'll we'll set this up appropriately momentarily. So that is all I've got for this video. Appreciate you following along. Drop a like before clicking away. Drop a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hello. Subscribe if you are new here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part.